head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Wavelength. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're trying to be on the same wavelength as our teammates. We're trying to read their mind, trying to figure out what they're thinking about, and wavelengths are just interesting electrical phenomena. Anyway, different lengths of waves, but today we're gonna look at this party game um, somewhat co-designed by Woking Warsh, who's been a heavy hitter here lately. So let's see how this party game plays, and I'll see you on the other side. Wavelength is a party game for two to 12 players, where one player is the clue giver for their team, and they're trying to give them a clue based upon this. All the way to the left is boring, all the way to the right is exciting. They're trying to give them a clue so that when the other players cannot see what this is, that they will be pushing this dial, trying to get this many points for it the most when they finally reveal it. Now the object of the game is to be the first team to get to 10 points. The team that goes second actually starts with a point. Uh, the team that's playing will pick up one card and they'll pick one side. There's two different options. And this one says boring versus exciting. So the clue giver only uh, will randomize this wheel like this. And then they will secretly open this window so only they get to see where this is. So between boring and exciting, they're trying to get their team to put this dial right here, which is not the most boring thing in the world, but pretty darn boring. Once they know where this is, they will close this window and they will come up with a clue. Now, I've actually re-randomized this and I'm gonna give you a clue. Between boring and exciting, uh, I'm going to say bungee jumping. And so everyone on, that's on this team is gonna talk about where to put this dial. Well, bungee jumping is probably definitely not boring, so probably someone exciting skill, but how exciting is it? So let's say you guys just decide, you know, it's like way up here. Now you decide now, put your finger right on the screen right now where you think bungee jumping is. Once you guys have fixed this dial or pushed your finger there, the clue giver would reveal. So here we go, we're going to reveal this. Ooh, if that's where you were, you would have gotten three points. Now, before that happened, when this was closed, the other team actually gets to guess whether they think the actual four is going to be to the right or the left of this. Let's just say they had selected left. They would be correct because the left is to the left of the dials where the four is, and they would have gotten a point as well. So the other team's trying to pay attention and, and think about things just like the other team is. And then you just start this round over. You'd give it to the other team. The other team will be the clue giver, and you'd go back and forth till somebody has 10 points. Okay, let's try one more. We have plain versus fancy. Now, typically you wanna do one concept. It could be more than one word. They recommend you do five words or less, uh, but you want it to be one concept. So how about I said jeans and a collared shirt? So I'll give you a few seconds to think about where on this is, put your finger right on the screen and then I'll reveal. Okay, here we go. All right, where did, was your finger? Did you get the four? Uh, and again, the other team would have been guessing left or right of this and gotten a point if they were correct. That's pretty much how you play. The first one to get to 10 points is the winner. Now, one of the problems I have with this game, it's really cool how this works, but when you open this, sometimes, as you can see, it can catch the wheel. You have to kind of like pull this towards you and pull it away. Uh, Cause if you don't, if you move it, it does, and it makes a big difference. Cause it, it, as you can see, I'm not even putting that much pressure on this and it moves this, which really causes a problem. You have to really pull back like this in order for it not to do that. So sometimes even when you're unlocking it, you know, like this, it'll move. You have to really pull like away from you, which is really unfortunate. Um, but once you know what you're doing, you know, you, you can do it correctly, but it can screw the game up. All right, well, there's Wavelength. Uh, this game is a very interesting concept where you're just coming out, out of the air with a very creative clue that's in between opposites. And you're trying to get your teammates to guess where that is. And they've got nothing else to go on as to what you're thinking. And it is a very interesting concept. It's definitely for those who like those sort of creative party game enthusiasts where you have open carte blanche to just pull out of the air anything that you can create and hopefully get on the same page as your teammates. If you like being very creative and you like that style of party game, then, then this is gonna be one you're gonna wanna look into. Uh, the reveal, when, when, when they set the dial and you 
put that thing up there and you, you reveal it. It can definitely lead to huge moments and high fives when you get, you know, you get a good score. And it definitely has some bursts of fun there. Um, it's interesting hearing the discussions of why uh, both sides thought the way they did, why the clue giver did and what the teammates were thinking. Um, and it, it's, it's interesting to hear that after the fact and you try to get better of learning how people think over the course of the games. Uh, and because of the scoring and the other team gets to possibly get a point if they guess which side the actual four is from the needle, both teams do stay engaged, which is cool. I also like the catch up rule where if you get a perfect score of four and you're, and, you know, you're still behind, you get to take another turn. That's a, a good way to keep things somewhat even in this. And I like the co-op variant as well. If you're playing with smaller player counts, uh, I would say mm, even less than six. Uh, I, th I prefer the co-op variant where you're all working together because, again, listening to people talk and uh, hear, you know, discussing with others is really the fun of this game. And when you're playing with less than six and you, and you split the teams, like if you're playing four, then there's no one to talk to. You're just trying to figure it out and you're listening to it. Maybe you talk out loud so they can hear what's going on. Uh, with five, you know, one side's going to have two people to talk, one's not. So as soon as there's at least two people that could talk together, six players and up, I like the normal play. Less than six players, I like the co-op variant better. Uh, also with the co-op variant, you're only going to give the clue, you know, less times. And the clue giving, which I typically like in these these games, these, you know, creative clue giving games like this, like code names and such, I usually like being the clue giver. This one was hard, absolutely for me in this one. Um, so overall, it's an interesting game. On the negative sides, uh, it can definitely drag on a bit because it is hard to figure out a clue sometimes. Even though you're selecting the category, sometimes it's really hard because you select the category before you see where, you know, where the range is. And so sometimes it can be very hard and it can kind of drag on. Even myself, who tends to be pretty quick at these things and keeps things moving, a couple of times I just got stuck where I really had to say, I'm like, sorry guys, it's just taking so long. I, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to think, I can't think of a clue. It can drag on a little bit sometimes because of the unlimited amount of creativity that you have. I almost think it might have been better if they gave you a little bit more boundaries or a little bit more focus that might give you, you know, something to sort of chew on. But giving you the unlimited opportunity sometimes can cause some analysis paralysis. Uh, this is definitely not good for those that don't like the spotlight. If you play party games with someone who is on the stage and they don't like that, they're not going to like this game or they're not going to want to be clue givers. Now, theoretically, they weren't supposed to be, but in a party game, you could just not have them, you know, be a clue giver. But be warned that, you know, people that don't like the spotlights aren't going to want to be clue givers in this game. Uh, the game can't, because it's so interesting and it's a unique concept and it has this creativity thing, the game can fall flat with some groups depending on who you are. Uh, and that little production issue I showed at the end where like when you reveal it, if you don't sort of pull that little bluish bar towards you, it can move that wheel and even moving it the tiniest bit can affect the points in a big way. Um, so that's kind of a downer. I mean, once you know what you need to do, but you know, the first time you're doing it, you know, you might just want to have one person do the reveal that kind of knows what they're doing. But overall, it's an interesting game. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's going to overtake anything like code names or anything like that. This is definitely one you're probably going to want to try because it is so different. But it definitely has some unique concepts and it is interesting and that is Wavelength. Did you miss the Game Topper 2.0 Kickstarter? Have no fear. It's not too late to get in on the ultimate gaming accessory. Convert your table into a high quality gaming table with a fully portable game topper system and take advantage of some of the best three millimeter premium gaming mats in the industry. New styles, new sizes, and new accessories can be yours. Upgrade every game you play by late backing now at GameToppersLLC.com.